If all roads led to Rome, how did Romulus and Remus found it? What was the speed limit on Roman roads? Did they have carpool or <clears throat> wagon pool lanes? These and other questions will be answered right after this. I'm Professor Jerome Markenberg, and I've been teaching a wide variety of history courses at colleges across this country for the past 30 years. In this video, I'm going to tell you about how roads first developed, who invented the wheel and the first wheel transport, who first paved the road, how and why the Romans built roads, the average travel time by road or sea before the Industrial Revolution, and why transport by sea, river, or lake was always best. At the end, I'll have the wrap-up quote on this video. But first, make sure to click like, share, and especially subscribe, and don't forget that little bell thingy so I can continue to bring you more great videos just like this one. The first roads, if you want to call them that, were animal tracks. But as settlements appeared, so did trails to link villages to each other. And as traffic grew, trails were flattened or widened until, as villages grew into towns and cities, road networks developed. Quarters, as seen here, first carried goods on their heads and backs, as you might see here. With the use of pack animals invented during the Stone Age, and the first vehicle, doubtless a frame like the Travois, which is, you see here, followed by sledges, which required wider paths and higher clearances. The wheel first appeared in ancient Sumer about 5000 BC as a pottery wheel before someone figured out to attach a single wheel to a travois or sled, kind of like a wheelbarrow, followed by the two-wheeled cart, which is what you see here, around 3000 BC, and the heavy four-wheeled wagon by about 2500 BC. Yes, yeah, hard to believe it took them about 500 years to figure out you can put four wheels in a cart and not simply have it as two. Now, wheeled transport needed better roads, at least in towns, with the first paved streets appearing in Sumer in 4000 BC, better than dirt and road building technology progressing over the next few millennia to the Roman era. The Romans, to aid troop movement, yes, the roads were not built for economic reasons, but for military reasons, then built the best roads in the West before the 19th century. And there they had a crushed stone roadbed and you see that here, them, uh, the illustration of guys putting together different things. So at the bottom, you have a nice compacted layer of sand and then slabs of stone and concrete above that. And then above that, even crushed stone and cement. And then the dressed stone blocks on the top, which is the summum dorsum, which you see right here. And stone drainage ditches. So this is on either side. So then uh, overall that the stones, the road profile would be cambered for drainage. And of course, flanked by footpaths. And as I said, drainage ditches. The 
nonetheless, progress on even the best Roman roads was slow. And here are some Roman wagons along. And this is a very nice chart here showing how much if you can go pretty much maximum speed and average speed if you were on foot, on horseback, by pigeon, interesting, on sea, and depending if it's carrying or walking stuff. So for the most part, pack horses and mules could travel but 20 miles a day and carts about 15. All of this, of course, made worse by having to travel in guarded caravans to lessen the risk from bandits and brigands. Despite all the improvements in roads, transport by water, river, canal, or sea, which you can see in that previous chart about water carriage, was always preferred around the world, certainly before the railroad. Though, of course, uh, railroads kind of go across the ocean. Uh, mostly as bulk goods. It's the heavy stuff. Bulk goods can be moved safely and cheaply in large volumes, despite the occasional toll or piracy. And the wrap-up quote. The Roman road is the greatest monument ever raised to human liberty by a noble and generous people. It runs across mountain, marsh, and river. It is built broad, straight, and firm. It joins city with city and nation with nation. It is tens of thousands of miles long and always thronged with grateful travelers. Robert Graves, 1935. Let me know what you think of this quote in the comment section below. Also, what you liked about this video and what other historical topics or subjects you'd like to see in future videos. Be sure to click like, share, and especially subscribe as it will help me bring you more great videos. And make sure to click on that little bell thingy so you'll know when the next History Waits for No One video is posted. If you want to know more, there are recommended studies on this topic in the description below, along with other ways to connect with me. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the past.